I'm very glad uh, to be with you today uh, in this panel. Uh, so uh, after years of armed conflict uh, in Yemen, which started in September 2014, the result today is, is clear. Uh, a country torn uh, apart and the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Uh, the war in Yemen is not a pure civil war and it doesn't uh, involve only local sides, but there are also uh, regional and international dimensions, in particular uh, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, backed by uh, UK, uh, US and other states on a hand. And on the other hand, uh, um, Iran, which backs the uh, Ansar Allah armed group, or as known as the Houthis. Uh, the responsibility of the worst humanitarian crisis is the responsibility of all warring parties, including states fueling the war with selling and providing uh, arms to the uh, warring parties. Uh, this has been documented uh, by uh, um, uh, the UN group of eminent experts, uh, UN panel of experts, as well as the uh, uh, documentation of uh, human rights organizations. Uh, so, uh, how, how to tackle all these issues, including the, the arms cells, which uh, uh, where the weapons are used against civilians and uh, uh, against civilian objects like hospitals and, uh, and schools. Uh, and from my point of view, uh, is that we need to work toward uh, accountability and, and redress. Uh, Yemen's warring parties have shown themselves again and again to be uninterested uh, in pursuing credible accountability or, or redress. Since 2014, uh, human rights uh, organizations uh, and UN entities have documented and published wide range of abuses committed by all parties to the conflict. Uh, and much of information already collected indicates that officials on all sides of the conflict are implicated in a host of uh, potential international crimes, uh, ranging from war crimes to torture uh, to starvation. Um, uh, uh, and why, why, why is this happening since 2014 when uh, Ansar Allah uh, and uh, military units loyal to former President Ali Abdullah Saleh uh, and the escalation of the armed conflict started when the uh, Saudi UAE elite coalition started the military intervention in March 2015. Uh, since then till now, we have seen uh, these violations and the reason behind this is impunity. Uh, uh, impunity has uh, driven the deterioration of the human rights and humanitarian situation in Yemen. Uh, last year, for example, uh, 2020 was another year of impunity. Uh, it, ended uh, it ended with a, a horrific attack on Aden International Airport on, on December 30, uh, coinciding with the arrival of the new internationally recognized government of, of Yemen to the city. Dozens of civilians were killed uh, or injured in the attack, including uh, some staff members of uh, uh, International uh, Committee of Red Cross, ICRC, as well as journalists. Uh, in addition, we have we are we still have four journalists uh, still detained by uh, by the Houthis, and they are facing uh, death penalty. Uh, and uh, in general, in, in 2020, Muatana has documented more than 1,000 incidents of violations of uh, international humanitarian law and international human rights law. And we need, and we need, as I mentioned before, that the accountability is needed to, uh, to stop this. And also we need to think about uh, uh, accountability and address as the only real uh, factors that will uh, sustain any uh, peace efforts in, in the country. Uh, so uh, the international community can and should do more to bridge what the UN group of eminent experts have described as the um, acute accountability gap in Yemen. Um, uh, recently, we have uh, uh, from, like the, the recent developments in the country is the uh, Ansar al Houthis attacking um, Ma'rib city, uh, which hosts millions of, of civilians. 
and ceasefire in, in Ma'rib and across the country is necessary to avoid uh, more tragic humanitarian and human rights uh, complications. Uh, the clashes in, in Ma'rib city uh, is also threatening the situation in Hudayda, which uh, has the Hudayda port, uh, uh, which, which is the main entry point for humanitarian aid and commercial goods. And uh, therefore, uh, there is a need for uh, uh, not only to stop the, the arms sales, uh, ending the arms sales is one thing that the states can do to stop fueling the armed conflict, but there are uh, other actions and other uh, uh, factors uh, or points that the international community, uh, including the United Kingdom, needs to, 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 to focus on. Uh, first of all, is to call for a ceasefire in, in, in Ma'rib and across the country, uh, because civilians can't wait anymore, and they can't, bear, they can't continue bearing all the implications and the hardship of the, uh, the armed conflict. Uh, there is a need to explore the establishment uh, of mechanism to ensure criminal accountability and reparations for Yemen. Uh, there is a need to continue to support the existing mandate of group of eminent experts on Yemen and utilizing uh, 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 their, uh, their findings and endorsing their recommendations, uh, including the ones related to uh, the uh, responsibility of third states, which provide and sell weapons to the uh, warring parties in Yemen. Uh, as a permanent uh, 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 state member, the UK uh, should uh, help and should support the referral of the situation in Yemen to the International Criminal Court and expand the list of uh, sanctions to include, to include all sites involved in the uh, armed conflict. Uh, there is also a need to exercise uh, universal jurisdiction as provided by uh, international and domestic law to investigate. Uh, uh, to investigate and evidence permitting persecute military and civilian officials alleged to have been involved in war crimes in Yemen. Uh, of course, there is a need to, to end the arms sales to Saudi Arabia, to the United Arab Emirates, and the coalition member states for the possibility of being used in violations of international humanitarian law and maybe war crimes. Uh, and it was appalling to see the UK government describing the violations of international humanitarian law as isolated uh, incidents because there, these are not isolated incidents. There is a pattern of targeting civilians and civilian objects by, by, by airstrikes, which have used the uh, US and European made weapons and Muatana has released uh, in, in March 2019, Muatana released the report uh, Day of Judgment, which documents the use of US and European made in Yemen by the Saudi UAE led coalition. Um, um, uh, the last two points that the international community uh, can uh, interfere to have positive impact in Yemen is pushing the warring parties uh, uh, and their supporting allies uh, to reach a political agreement without undermining accountability and redress efforts. And uh, finally, I can conclude with this point is that the, uh, the, there is a need to impose uh, targeted sanctions on officials and perpetrators of grave viol uh, violations during the conflict in Yemen, including those from Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, uh, and Iran. Um, uh, so uh, again, uh, the accountability and redress uh, are the key factors if we want to have durable peace in the country and the states and international community should not undermine uh, these factors when there is any coming discussion about uh, peace efforts or, the, uh, uh, or any political uh, uh, process in future. Uh, I will stop here and over to you, Sarah. Thank you.